Welcome back everyone. We're going to be talking about solving linear equations by multiplication and division in this video, just like the last video where we talked about solving linear equations with addition and subtraction. We're going to be isolating the variable here, which essentially just means performing the reverse of the order of operations in the reverse order if, uh, if you have you know, an array of the order of or array of operations in here. In this case, and in, um, in the case of the last video, what we want to do is essentially perform the reverse or the inverse of the operation that's being performed um, and the inverse of addition is subtraction and vice versa and then the addition of, or I'm sorry, the inverse of multiplication is division and vice versa. So whatever we see being done to the variable that we're interested in solving for, we have to do the opposite or the, perform the inverse operation to get it by itself or to isolate it. Okay, so if we start with number one, we have one sixth y equals 12. Well, one sixth times y, one sixth multiplied to y is the same thing as dividing y by six. So you can think about fractions when you're multiplying something by a fraction, you're actually dividing by that number. So here we have y over six because one sixth times y would just be six is equal to 12. So what we have to do now uh, to get rid of this six in the denominator or to undivide by six is to multiply by six on both sides. Because like I said on the last video, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other one to maintain that equality. Because if we're multiplying by six on both sides, we could, we could cancel that multiplication on both sides since it's being done to both sides. So you have to do whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other one to maintain that equality. Um, and in this case, if we're multiplying by six and dividing by six on this side, these will just become one, so they'll cancel each other out and you'll just have one times y, which is what we want. And then we have 12 times six, which is 72. So we have y equals 72. And we solved for the variable. Okay. Now in this next case, in number two, we see that the variable is being multiplied by something and being divided by something. Now you can do this in any order you want and I can show you both ways that'll get you to the same answer. It's just, um, I personally, you know, I personally prefer when I see a, um, a situation like this to usually clear um, what's in the denominator first, just because it makes it a little bit easier to look at and visualize. Okay, so we have the first way to do it, the way I personally prefer to do it, but like I said, there's almost always more than one way to do something in math. So we have 6r over negative 7 equals negative 12. So what we can do first, since we see that it's being divided by negative 7, we can multiply. Oops, that was not what I wanted to do. Let me uh, get that out of there for you. Is we can multiply by negative 7 on both sides first, that would make this one. Negative, uh, negative seven divided by negative seven is one, so it can essentially get canceled out. And then we have six r is equal, okay, so negative 12 times negative seven, the negatives cancel, those become positive. Negative one times negative one is positive one. And then 12 times seven is 84. So we have six r equals 84. So then what we do from there is we, um, we can see that it's um, the variable r that we need to solve for is um, being multiplied by six. So in order to get rid of that, we have to divide both sides by six. Six divided by six is one, so we can make it go away and then if I continue down here a little bit, r is equal to 84 divided by 6, which is 14. So we solve for r. Likewise, you can do this a different way, a second way if you'd like to, if it makes more sense to you. If we consider the same thing, 6r over negative 7 equals negative 12, 
what you can first do, if you so choose, is to divide both sides by six so that the multiplication is undone. So now we're left with r over negative seven is equal to negative 12 divided by six would be negative two. And then now we can multiply both sides by negative seven and uh, negative seven divided by negative seven is one. So then we're left with one times r on the left side, which is what we want. And negative two times negative seven is negative, or I'm sorry, is positive 14. So you end up with the same answer either way. It's really just a question of preference. Multiplication and division fall in the same place in the order of operations, so you don't have to do one before the other. It's totally up to you. You just have to make sure that you take care of both of them. Um, if you prefer method one like I do, where you clear out the denominator first, or you clear out the division first and then um, divide after that to clear out the multiplication. That's, that's awesome if you want to do it the other way, where you um, clear out the, um, the multiplication first by dividing and then um, multiply to clear out the denominator to solve for the variable. That's totally fine as well. Either it's, you know, one way isn't better than the other. It's just what makes more sense to you. Just keep in mind that you, you can do it either way. You'll get the same answer. Okay, so now we're dealing with uh, with two fractions here. So, but it's the same same exact thing. We're gonna be just fine. Okay, so we have x over five is equal to negative four over twenty five. Well, the only thing being done to x currently is that it's being divided by five. So, in order to get rid of that, we need to multiply by five. I'm sorry, I, I should note this now. I'm going to start using parentheses to note multiplication because we already have an x. So if I write the, the multiplication x, that might be a little bit confusing. Okay, so what we have here is 5, 5 divided by 5. That's 1 that cancels. So we have x. This can be written as 5 over 1 that we're multiplying by. So we multiply fractions just like normal. Negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. And then we have um, 25 times 1 is 25. And we always have to make sure we write fractions in simplest form. So um, we see that we can factor out a 5 from both of these. We can divide by 5. So that would mean that this would be negative 4 fifths. Alternatively, if you considered this multiplication, just to make things uh, easier for yourself in the future, if we had negative 4 25ths times 5, um, you're always allowed to cross cancel when you multiply um, when you multiply fractions together, meaning that if you see a common factor in the numerator and denominator across from each other, you can cancel them out. So we know that five is a factor of 25. So we can divide by five and divide by five down here. So now all, what we have is negative four fifths times one. So that'd be negative four fifths. And we're already in simplified, or in simplest form as you see here. So don't, uh, you don't have to do that if that's confusing. That's just a way to think, a different way to think about it if you wanted to cross cancel so you don't have to simplify after. Just always make sure that you uh, that you simplify if you can. Cross canceling helps sometimes because sometimes if you multiply all the way through, you'll end up with a re like with really big numbers in the numerator and denominator and it'll be harder to think about how to how to simplify them. So that can be a use the cross canceling can be a useful tool for you um, moving forward just in case uh, or if you need it. And actually cross canceling will come in really handy for us in number four. Once again, you don't have to use it if you don't want to. It'll work out the same either way. But it might be easier in this case, considering the numbers that we're working with. Okay, so what we have here is two over 17p 
equals 12 over 51. So if you see this being done, um, if you see a fraction being multiplied um, by or like to a, a variable, what you can do to get rid of the fraction on the side is multiply by its reciprocal, which means you flip the numerator and denominator and you multiply it because we know that 17 over 2 times 2 over 17, this works because of cross canceling. These can cancel, these can cancel, and you're just left with 1. So we have P equals. We're gonna cross cancel here too because if we multiply this out and then try to simplify after, it's gonna be pretty difficult by hand. We know that two is a factor of 12, so we can cancel those out. And then 12 divided by two is six. 17 is a factor of 51, so we can cancel both of those out too. 17 divided by 17 is one, 51 divided by 17 is three. So now what we're left with on this side is six over three times one over one, which is just six over three, which is equal to two. So we have P equals two. And uh, that would be the end for that one. Um, that's our answer. And that brings me back, actually, what we can do, we can do this one a third way if you wanted to. And I'll show that third way. I just didn't want to overwhelm too much all at once. So if we did it the third way and we had 6r over negative 7 equals negative 12. You can think of this as the negative 12 over 1. We can also think of this as 6 over negative 7 times r is equal to negative 12 over 1. And then we can do the same thing, multiply by the reciprocal which would be negative seven sixths. So these cancel and we're left with R is equal to, well, six can factor into 12. So we can divide out by both and this would become a negative two instead of a negative 12. So what we're left with is negative two times negative seven over one, which is just positive 14 as we had before. So there's a variety of different ways to do things. I just find when you have a fraction being multiplied, it's best to do that and always try to cross cancel if you can because it'll save time. It'll save time uh, down the line. Okay, and last but not least, we have one that involves uh, two steps as we had or from, um, and it combines something that we did last time, which is isolating the variable with addition and subtraction as well. Okay, so this is where the kind of reverse of um, the order of operations comes in. Normally you're told to handle multiplication and division first, but the thing is if you do multiplication and division first, which is if you multiply by the reciprocal of three sevenths, you have to do that to all the terms, including this four, which we don't wanna do um, so what you typically do is you start with um, addition and subtraction and then work your way back backwards through the order of operations. So we see that this three, uh, three sevenths X is being, or has a four being added to it. So first we might want to subtract this four from both sides so that we're left with three sevenths times X is equal to negative six. And now you can either proceed with either or with any three of these methods that we discussed in number three. I think the simplest of which would be to multiply by the reciprocal or to do method one. But I'm gonna, for the sake of um, less steps, I'm gonna do multiplying by the reciprocal. That would mean we'd multiply by seven. Seven thirds, I don't know why sometimes it wants to do that, by seven thirds on both sides. This is six over one. And then we're multiplying by seven thirds. So this would cancel because it's multiplying by the reciprocal and then we're left with x is equal to, well, three can factor into six 
um, that would be 1, and then this would be negative 2, because this negative still applies here. Well, let me uh, fix that. I don't know why this part of the screen doesn't want to work. So now what we're left with is negative 2 over 1 times 7 over 1. So we have x is equal to negative, negative 14. And that is the, the end of, of that problem. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope it was helpful, and I will talk to you in the next one.